Hey, good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, February the 5th, and this is your daily word of encouragement. So this past Wednesday night at the break room, we were talking about the need for us to learn how to try softer. You know, so many other things in life, I mean, there's skills that we learn, things don't come naturally to us. We have to try harder, right? We have to work harder at it in order to obtain that skill, be able to do it with proficiency. And so many times we translate that into our, our spiritual walk, our walk with the Lord, our, our this, this, this calling to be a disciple that I got to work harder at it. You know, I got to, I got to follow the rules, got to hit the checklist. Um, you know, got it, in our minds, we think about discipline as, as the, as the work and the effort that I exert. And it is true that we are called to partner with God in this process of our growth, but he always takes the lead. And if we simply fall back into that mentality of, well, I got to work hard for this works-based, not just salvation, but even works-based sanctification of, of this process of making us more like Jesus, we, we fall guilty to the same trap as the Pharisees. Uh, the Pharisees were very content in the time of Jesus to have a, re, a religion that they could manage, you know, that, that they had activities they could do so that they would be perceived to be holy. But perhaps Jesus' greatest indictment of them was to quote the prophet Isaiah when he um, accused leaders like that, saying, you know, these people honor me with their lips, but their, their hearts are far from me. These people were diligent in following the rules and all the, the actions of looking, looking holy and devout, but their hearts truly didn't know the Lord. And that's not what God wants from us, and it's certainly not what God wants for us. Um, God is calling us into a relationship, and so... Um, it, so many times, it's the, the way that we that, that God moves in our lives is, is by by yes, us building and creating discipline and you know enter to our lives, but but truly just drawing closer to God and being more aware of Him throughout our day and more submissive to Him throughout our day. The, the closer we draw to God's goodness, the more of Him flows in us and flows through us. And that's really the picture that I want to paint for you today about this idea of growing with the flow, not not going with the flow. When you think about going in the flow, I get a picture of like a, a little twig that's gotten tossed into a mighty river and um, is completely out of control and letting the river do all the work. No, it's, I think what, what we're being called to do is to grow with the flow, meaning that there's a role that we play. There, we're called to be active participants in this growth process that God is doing in our lives, but to recognize that once we have become part of the, uh, the body, you know, we think about the Holy Spirit coming into us, but really the, the more accurate picture is us being absorbed into the flow and the power of the Holy Spirit. Like that, like that mighty river, and now we are we are in its we are in its control and being moved and grown as we are in this, this the flow of the spirit. Um, I heard a phrase a years ago. Uh, I didn't grow up doing martial arts, but I heard a, uh, this this terminology that was used, I guess, in the martial art world. I guess Bruce Lee is the one that for, really first made it famous when he said that um, this kind of state of peace and balance that martial arts is supposed to be able to to give you when you practice it is to develop this mind-like water. And the idea was that you know water kind of adapts to whatever uh, container that it's in, and it's that ability to be able to adapt to every circumstance, every situation. And that is a valuable skill. I mean, adaptability is, is, a, is a great skill to have in life. We've certainly, over the last uh, you know, several months of, of our lives here um, on Earth, we've had to learn how to be very adaptable as you know, our circumstances have changed dramatically. However, that kind of water is also static water. It's, it's water that's contained. It's not water that's flowing and moving. And that, that idea of flowing water, moving water, is, is really the better picture that, that we're given throughout Scripture for how the Spirit moves and works in us as we step into and as we grow with that flow. It's the kind of living water that Jesus talked about when he met the Samaritan woman at the well in John 4, uh, when she had had a life of, of, of emptiness and had a pain that, that went way deep down inside. And Jesus says, I can fill that pain, I can touch that pain, and I can give you a living water that flows and produces fulfillment in you that you never have to go chasing after other things to quench that thirst again. It's also the, the source of our scripture today, which is John chapter 7, uh, verses 37 through 39. And just a brief little bit of context, uh, Jesus um, was speaking at the end, the last day of, a, of one of the, the, the five major festivals that the Jews would celebrate back in the first century. And um, something that would typically happen on this last day of the festivals all week long, um, uh, the priests would be would go to one of the pools there in Jerusalem and, and, and uh, one of the springs, and they would get a pitcher of water and pour it into the base of the altar there at the temple, along with wine as well. And at the end of the week, there was like the, this, uh, this 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 trap that was collecting all of uh, the wine and the water throughout the week uh, would be released, or a valve would be released, and so this water and wine would flow together, symbolic of cleansing and blood that that, you know, that cleanses the sin from the uh, the people of their sin. And it was this, this picture, and then so Jesus used that image 
to talk about this living water that flows within us that, that through the you know through the blood of God we, we receive atonement for our sins but we also receive cleansing and this is not just a one-time cleansing but it's a constant renewal that we experience when we allow the spirit to flow within us and here's what he said John chapter 7 verse 37 on the last and greatest day of the festival Jesus stood and said in a loud voice let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink for whoever believes in me as scripture has said rivers of living water will flow from within them and by this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive but up until that time the spirit had not yet been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified you see that's ultimately how we grow that's ultimately how we become mature it's ultimately how we become more and more like Jesus is through the flow of the Holy Spirit and Jesus says you know when you try to pursue growth by your own effort or by your own work or when you try to escape into other things to try to find satisfaction or fulfillment you'll always find yourself coming up thirsty but when you grow with the flow and you allow the Holy Spirit to grow and emerge from within you um, that that's truly where maturity takes place and there's, there's a partnership in that. We, we submit ourselves. We actively continue to, to center ourselves and focus ourselves upon God. We're aware of Him every, every single day. Um, we're conscious uh, of how He's moving around us, where He's teaching us, where He's guiding us, um, always getting, you know, pointing us back to Jesus. And in that process, that's where we allow and we sense the Spirit's presence with us, always guiding us and directing us back towards God. That's the concept of growing with the flow. This idea that there's always a constant source of renewal that's, that's, um, that's readily available to me. The power of God at work in me and through me. It's what the, the writer of Psalms uh, was referencing back in Psalm 1 where he says, you know, Blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord, the truth of God, and who meditates on that truth day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water. It yields its fruit in season. Its leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Like there's a power for a living that comes uh, to us when we continue to center ourselves and focus ourselves upon the Lord that doesn't come from our own strength. Because if we're only depending upon our own strength and our own best effort, we're going to give out. We're going to tire out. But if we will allow ourselves to continually be drawn into the presence of God, that's where that promise of living water, the streams of living water comes from so that we can continue to grow with the flow. Not trying harder on our own, but learning to try softer, to surrender ourselves to the flow of God and work in us through His Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord, just uh, desperate for more of you. Lord, I pray that you would make us more aware of you throughout our day. We can get so consumed and so uh, bombarded, overwhelmed with uh, the challenges of the day, with the pressures of the day, uh, with the criticism that gets lobbed at us from different uh, directions. Um, Lord, I continue to turn our eyes back to you. Uh, Lord, I continue to draw our spirits closer to you um, so that we're more consumed with your presence. And we allow your, your presence to fill us and to flow in us and then ultimately to flow through us, Lord, um, so that we are constantly being reminded that we uh, have your power at work in us. Lord, I just pray that we would submit ourselves to you today, that you would do your work in us to transform us more and more uh, into uh, that, that new image that you have in mind. Um, Lord, we love you and we pray these things in your name. Amen. God bless everyone.